Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about Spark monitoring. So, uh, Spark is the most widely used technology in the big data world for processing your data. Now, when we run uh, huge uh, applications or applications on huge data, it is very, very important to monitor how our application is performing. Right? Debugging and monitoring are the most important aspects that one needs to know. So today we are going to talk about monitoring. What are the inbuilt mechanisms in Spark? How do we, what all parameters or what all levers that it does it provide us to monitor? And we will also look at uh, some of the external things that can be used along with Spark to monitor it efficiently. So first of all, monitoring is what? Monitoring is nothing but looking at how your application is performing and it can be in various ways it can be something to do with the actual performance of the application in terms of how much time it is taking uh, how which what amount of memory is it consuming uh, these kind of parameters plus sometimes we also want to look at certain metrices to figure out how many executors are running how slow are they running how fast are they running where are they stuck because when you monitor it is so monitoring and debugging both are interlinked we monitor the entire application to make sure that it gives us levers to even debug when something goes wrong so what are the different ways in which we can monitor? One is using web UI. So Spark does provide a web UI which will give you a lot of information about each and every application task that is running. Uh, there are ways to look at REST APIs, some inbuilt metrics that Spark gives as well as some external tools that we can use along with it. So first of all, let's talk about the web interface and the most basic thing that everybody will go to when they want to monitor what is happening within their application. So the first and foremost thing is the web interface. Now uh, in a Spark program we all know there is a Spark context that gets created. So this Spark context what it does is it launches a web UI and by default it will run, run on port 4040. What it does this UI gives us a very good way of uh, looking at how our application is performing because this UI gives us a list of all the scheduler stages tasks so in the previous videos I have spoken about spark architecture what are tasks what are stages and executors all of that so this web UI is a very simple and easiest way to look at your application how it is performing it will give you a list of all the stages and tasks so each of your when you run your spark application it will have stages and it will have tasks so how to monitor each and every stage and task this web ui can help it also gives a summary of the rdd so basic basic unit in spark is rdd which is nothing but resilient distributed data sets that is the building block of spark so it is important to know what is the memory usage when your spark application is running how much memory is it consuming what is the size of an rdd how much data is getting transferred when the tasks are getting executed it also gives information about the entire environment about the executors so in a nutshell this ui it is launched as soon as a spark context object is created and by default it will run on the driver node at the port 4040 so whenever we want to monitor what is happening this is the first place we would go to now uh, the information that comes on the web ui is a bit limited why it is limited this web ui is only showing uh, the progress of your application while the application is running only for that duration if the application stops running we will not be able to view the stats on the web ui so if we want our uh, the information after the applications have uh, completed or we want information for some previous runs that we have done so what we do we there is a property called spark event log enabled which ensures that logs are enabled and everything is getting logged it will consume space but it will make sure that it is creating logs for you to look at it later on when the application has even ended so what we do we set up this property so it will allow spark uh, to store the information 
with whatever information displayed in the ui initially to a persisted storage now what will happen is we can reconstruct the ui from this these logs that are stored and there is also a concept of a history server in spark so web ui is nothing but an interface to see uh, the information when the application is running but beyond that for the previous runs for something which is not running if i want to go and look at it then i can start the history server by default it will run on port 18080 and it will read from the logs that we enable so it is important to have the history server also enabled and we have to keep in mind that this logs that we are storing are going to consume a lot of space over the time because there are tons of applications running we are making sure that all the logs are stored in a persistent storage so it will consume a lot of space now one way to control or optimize this space is to enable compaction as well as rolling event for the log files why because as i said over a period of time this log is going to become really really huge so either we clean up the logs or what we do is we enable event log rolling and we also give a max file size typically if uh, if we have a very very long running application it will create for one application it will create one single event log file now if the application is a very long running one then it will create a huge event log file now that's a cost to maintain it and also when you want to read it through the history server <coughs> a large number of resources are required to replay this log file so to remediate that we can set the event log rolling enabled to true and also the max file size so what will happen uh, it compaction will allow the files to be of a smaller size overall size will be reduced and if you give a max file size it will create another file after that so it's a rolling event that we are enabling for log files instead of a huge one big file it will chunk into multiple files depending on the size that we are giving for the rollover now uh, these are the three settings that are important one is enabling it giving the max file size and also giving the max files to retain you can decide how much you want to retain as i said uh, enabling history server helps us but it is also a cost in terms of storage and then replaying back those logs to create the history so this is one of the basic basic things that spark provides now second lever that it provides us for monitoring is rest apis so in addition to whatever we are viewing on the UI, whether it is the actual web UI or the history server, there is a way to get all of this information as a part of a JSON. Now why this is needed? Because it is easy for developers to create new visualizations and monitoring. Now I may not be happy with whatever metrics or visualization that Spark is providing. So this is a lever given or a facility given to the developers to use REST APIs and have any kind of visualization that they want now this json is available both for the running applications as well as the history server because this is the rest api form of monitoring spark and it is as i said it is giving everything available as a json so there are multiple metrics that spark provides by default I'll give few of the examples. For example, executor task metrics. So this REST API will expose the values of executor task metrics. Whatever the Spark executors are executing at the granularity of the task execution. Task is the lowest granularity in a Spark application. So what it does, it collects all the metrics possible for the task that it that is getting executed on the executors. So as the name suggests, executor task metrics because tasks are ultimately getting executed on an executor. Executor is my workhorse, which is performing the action. One executor can have multiple tasks running, but essentially it is uh, aggregating and collecting all the information metrics for these executors and they can be exposed through a REST API. There are n number of them. You can check it in the Spark documentation, but just to name a few, uh, it is like how much time the executor took to run what was the cpu utilization how much of memory was consumed and there are a bunch of such parameters which you can collect using a rest api about your tasks similarly you can calculate metrics for an executor so one is the task level and 
where is the task executing on an executor so executor level metrics can also be collected using rest apis typically what is happening is in your spark architecture you have one single driver which is like the brain right or someone someone you can treat who is driving this whole uh, spark application and then there are multiple executors which are actually doing the work or the work horses on which the task is running so to enable this whole communication what the executors are doing they are sending heartbeats to the driver saying that i am alive right now while that is happening the executors when they are sending this heartbeat they also describe performance metrics they tell how are they performing about themselves they are giving that information like jvm heap memory the garbage collection information all of that so executor metrics will give different kinds of parameters like memory peak values and uh, rdd blocks how much memory did they use how much disk did, did they use how many total cores are there on an executor there can be multiple cores how many number of failed tasks completed versus active all this information the executor sends to the driver while it is sending a heartbeat and this api can also be collected in the form of a json through the rest api so this is the flexibility apart from web ui that spark gives to the developers to pull all kind of metrics about executor and the task and they can create their own visualization now uh, apart from the default the web ui the history server the rest api there can be a need for the developers to have more promising more sophisticated monitoring so one way is using the rest api is you build your own or you can use certain external tools which are quick to use they are already developed for example if i want to do a cluster wide monitoring i can have a huge cluster because we are talking about big data a kind of a problem where you have huge amount of data you are running enterprise level application so you have a very big cluster now how do you get that information there are tools like ganglia which can give you insight to the entire cluster how it is getting utilized resource bottlenecks and there are many other tools ganglia is the one which is used quite often it has a dashboard which gives you visualization and quickly tells you everything that is happening in your entire cluster then there are os profiling tools like dstat iostat iotop which can give you very fine grained profiling in, on individual nodes in the cluster you may have thousands of nodes in your cluster you cannot simply go and manually monitor them or just use the web ui to monitor the application you would need much beyond that so then you would use tools like ganglia or you use you can use os profiling tools there are also very basic like we all know jvm utilities we have jstack which will give us stack traces jmap which will create heat heap dumps etc and you can get a entire by jstack you can get a entire time series statistics for visually exploring all of these jvm properties so these are the external tools external to spark that can also be used for monitoring but all in all monitoring is one aspect which absolutely cannot be ignored when we are running spark applications it helps us in debugging also in terms of looking at the logs looking at what happened how much time so you can look at a uh, application and see if one uh, particular task took a lot of time or one stage took a lot of time how much data did it read how much data did it transfer it will help you to narrow down to the problem and also optimize the way you have written your spark application so this is all about uh, spark monitoring in a very short and concise manner i hope this has helped you to get started on your journey of spark monitoring so thanks everyone for listening in please like share and subscribe to the channel to get more interesting videos thank you